Sounds again. Many, many years ago on the old Conan O'Brien show, he would do a bit called Secrets, Celebrity Secrets, Secrets. and they're always very, very mundane. But it was a funny bit. And he had David Bowie one time do that bit. His secret was, it was not great to be in Cincinnati. It was great to be in Cincinnati if you were a Bengals fan, I guess. Not really. I mean, they didn't make the playoffs. It doesn't mean backups. anything, but it it's nothing. more entertaining to me because of all the people flipping out over it. Who's because flipping out over it? Browns fans flipping what? out. I don't know. But what? People, Browns fans are flipping out over yesterday's game. I saw people on social media oh, tearing their hair out, so and pe- I don't know. I thought maybe I was missing something. You know, I'm, uh, Bill, you know me. I'm not Joe Sports. You were. I thought you always said, you know me, Bill. I'm Joe Sports. No, no, no. I'm Joseph Sports. Oh. I like to keep it uh, professional. Yeah. yeah. But the point is, is that I didn't, uh, I thought maybe I was missing something at the people that were all upset. Maybe it was just an ego thing or something, because they really did get thumped. Uh, right, but, but they were playing with their back. They were playing with the JV team. There's understood. guys that they signed just for that game, and it doesn't matter. And it didn't matter. Like we're the fifth seed all the way through. That's what it was. So anybody that was upset over yesterday's game is uh, not really getting the point. I thought maybe I was missing something. Who? I did read though that the AFC North, uh, the first NFL division in almost a century, to have all of the teams. Uh, end up above 500. Very impressive. Yeah, for people who pay attention to those kinds of things. Ravens, Browns, Steelers, Bengals. Um, so, uh, yeah. But again, I, I thought maybe that I was, uh, it was 31 to 14, and I thought maybe I was missing something. Um, but it turns out that I wasn't. And maybe people just needed something. Uh, now, I'm going to go on a limb here. If you spend any appreciable amount of time on any social media platform, it seems to me that some people are just maybe looking for something to get upset about? What? That doesn't make no difference. <laughs> as though they have as though they have like some psychotic wiring in their brain that doesn't fire the way that it's supposed to. That doesn't make any and sense at all. I didn't think that it did either. Mm-hmm. But I don't know these things. And you're Joseph Sports. I'm Joseph Sports. <laughs> He's Joseph Sports. <laughs> and I uh I try to pay attention. By the way, for the people who listen to us on iHeartRadio, uh, there was much consternation uh, on my part because our very first show back after our long Christmas vacation was not available to you. And I was uh, putting up a stink over here because, of course, I post our shows each and every night and it wasn't showing up. And I got conflicting reports as to why that was. And so I kept pushing it up the uh, the tech nerd ladder. And uh, a short story long, uh, if you missed our first show back and I've otherwise I wouldn't unless you guys told me I wouldn't necessarily uh, concern myself with it that much, but uh, uh, it is up there now. So uh, if you listen to us oh, on good, iHeart good, Radio, good, good, good. Yeah, because so if, issues resolved. Issues resolved. I don't know if it will be going forward. Uh, my the things that I do haven't changed, but I guess we've switched to some kind of new platform, and so maybe that had something to do with it. But all of the other shows, with I don't know. Who cares? It was a short week last week, but I thought at the very least but because great you know, show. Well, when we come back from a long break, you know, so we've all got about. a lot of things to to discuss and work out, and there's some people. Uh, dipping in now who might not be hip to uh, the Kia boys boosting Pound Cakes ride. And uh, that's all in there. Uh, Mary moving to New York for people who had no idea that that was happening. Uh, I'm homeless. Who's who's replacing her? Huh? Who? What? What? Someone's replacing her, right? She's replacing me on the show. She has no idea how expensive Who's that lady talking? Yeah. uh, So how many 25 cent pops are you deep? Just one. Oh, just one. Yeah. All right. I've been drinking it. Trying to drink more water. No, I understand. Water's good. More water. That's the way to do it. Got to hydrate. Yeah. Although nobody can seem to, depending on uh, what people you pay attention to or listen to, nobody can seem to nail down how much water you're supposed to be drinking. Thousands. You really can't blame anyone. I'm somebody who tries to take care of myself. I'm the oldest person on this program. But, um... You really can't blame people who just throw their hands in the air and say, screw it. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I'm going to live. I like, enjoy. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to live like I'm probably only going to make it to 45 uh, anyway. Because they tell you one thing, and then the next week they tell you another thing. People aren't drinking enough water. And then it's people are drinking too much water. It's like, well, why do you What's think that is? too much water? I do, or- what is what? Not enough. <laughs> I mean, every person's different, and, you know, you should be drinking eight glasses a, a day. And then they're like, people are overhydrating. Yes, well, you can blame the uh, tumbler 
You can blame Big Tumblr for well, that. all the I, marketing on water bombs. Stanley. I blame you, Stanley. <laughs> yeah, people paying all that money for those damn cups. The Yeti Corporation. But, but Yetis also, and Stanleys. it's not necessarily how much water you drink. It's like the type of water you drink. You're like, oh, how no, you drink, you, it? you drink tap water? No, you need to buy bottled water. I'm like, that. it's all just a scam. Like, I don't. Well, I'm not I, saying, it, I don't think it's a scam. You should drink water. But I'm, but I'm talking about like people say that a Brita filter is not enough, or you know, oh well, you yeah. Tap you water. need mineral water. Some, some you need can't it, afford yeah. bottled water. I know you could say you could get it from you know. You but then also there would be like, well, don't drink bottled water because that just puts more plastic out into the world. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. you can't win. And I'm like, bro, like if the water doesn't immediately kill me, then I'm fine. Let's I don't, start I don't smoking care. inside again. Let's get back to that. <laughs> you got to air your clothes out every time. I, you know. Everyone who has conspiracy theories about water, I'm like, but you eat McDonald's. We're like, you eat all this fast food. If there's something in the water, you think there's it's not in fast food? So, Pound Cake, your thought is if the water doesn't kill me on contact, I'm good. Well, everything's gonna everything's killing you slow. The air's killing you slow. Well, that's not on contact the, the, though. You made it sound like if you take a sip of water and, then, and you don't yeah. drop <laughs> and you yeah, don't no, drop it's, dead, it's, not, it's probably fine. Yeah, because I'm not gonna know what killed me. It could be the water. It could be the food. It could be you know something in the air. It could be gas. It could be all that a promiscuity. Um, no, not so much. Not so much. Not so much. More likely, it's gonna be the tap water that does him in. Well, listen, I was looking. There was a guy on the vaccine. Yeah, there there was a dentist on TikTok the other day, and he's going, I hate to burst everybody's bubble, but uh, the bubbly water can give you cavities. I didn't realize that there was conversation where people go, oh, the carbonated water is better for you because blah, blah, blah. Better than pop, pop, probably. Better than pop. But he he said a lot of people think that you can't get cavities because you're drinking water. But he's like, the carbonation and the acidity can have the- Exact same effect on I didn't it. think it was any healthier. It, I just like the taste. I don't know about that. I don't know if I trust that because I've heard that You don't that trust can, the de- that dentist? I don't trust that dentist I because <laughs> I've heard that it can break down the enamel like because But the isn't that what causes cavities? cavities? That's what are going to cause a cavity. But cavities are like your tooth rotting. So I guess it's like that in combination mm-hmm. with maybe a poor diet. But I feel like if you're not eating a ton of sugar- there's nothing in that water that's going to rot your tooth. As long as you brush frequently. Well, he said that, yeah. that there's acidity involved in the carbonation process, I guess. But that's enamel. That's not necessarily cavity, right? No, but an op- the enamel covers your tooth. Correct. An opening in the surface of, your t- surface of your tooth is what creates a cavity. Literally. A cavity in your tooth. But a cavity d- means something's like sitting in there or something deep no. sitting there for a long period of time. No, that just a hole in your tooth. Okay. If it goes unattended, it can get really bad. But- you know, because after a while, I mean, you're going to start to feel it. There's people with cavities that don't feel it. That's why they go to the dentist, and the dentist goes, you have a cavity. They go, oh, I didn't know. Mm. That's why you go to the dentist, because you didn't feel anything. If it gets down to your nerve, right, then you've got a big problem. I was pissed. One year I waited three years ago to the dentist, and they were like, you have three cavities. I'm like, ugh. Why were you I mad? Did... Well, because. I had. I was like, now I have to deal with this. Ignorance was bliss. Like, And I oh. took care of my teeth, but I'm like, it was like, you know, you can if you're not flossing every single day after every single meal, which I was, and I was flossing like once a day, and I was thinking that that was. And you thought it was the dance? No. <laughs> He's like, this is doing nothing for my teeth. I don't understand what all the hubbub is about. All right. Well, what precipitated that visit? Because you could have conceivably waited even longer. Because at that, I didn't have health insurance. I didn't have, well, I didn't have dental insurance. Oh, so then you got dental and you I, go, I'm going to go to the When dentist. I got dental, I'm like, okay, it's time for my checkup. Like, I see. You got three cavities. Yeah. And this, this was back in, like, right after I turned 26. Like, 20, 2017, I got it through, like, my job. And then so I got that taken care of. And I haven't had cavities since. So after, after that initial long, long uh, time without going to the dentist, I was fine. Yeah. Well, and insurance companies don't think that eyes and teeth are part of the human body, so you pay extra for all that. Mm-hmm. But and that's it, the fun part. Well, it's just more expensive. Teeth are just expensive. It was, it was like $150 per tooth. Hmm. You got off light. I'm going to take a break here so I can give you some money. It is 17 seconds of a break. We're a break nonetheless, but it's a chance for you to grab uh, some cash. Uh, we're back to the buzzard bookie. Day one, so you got plenty of these. Uh, to listen for and win, so I hope you do. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Bank. That's bank. Enter it now at WMMS.com. 
Uh, people leave voicemails for us over the weekend. You can always uh, drop messages for us on the Alan Kasho After Hours line if you want. It is 216-986-8903. Hey, Alan. George here. Just wanted to say that I'm a big fan of the show. Alan, Bill, Mary, and Pound Cake. Keep up the work. I appreciate you all for making my afternoons better. All right. Have a good one. That's AI, right? That I was has like, to was be that AI. A computer? Who, who is that yeah. supposed to be? He goes, "Hey, that's George. We've I never no heard idea. from a George before. Doesn't mean there aren't multiple Georges listening. I'm just saying. I've, he said, "Hey, it's George," but that sounded very. Unless he has an unbelievably kind of uh, stilted delivery, in which case I appreciate all the enunciation. But um, that sounded like he was supposed to be a fake celebrity voice. George. Who? I don't know what that was. Papadopoulos. Maybe. Picard? Play it again. Burns. No. Alan, George here. Just wanted to say that I'm a big fan of the show. Alan, Bill, Mary, and Pound Cake. Keep up the work. I appreciate you all for making my afternoons better. All right, have a good one. George. That could be a real George, Maybe. but I wasn't getting that vibe. Oh, it sounded it's very much like giving very uh, AI. Hmm. All right. Hey, Michael Bolton uh, had brain surgery. And he didn't uh, reveal it until a couple of days ago. Of course, you'll remember Michael Bolton on this show when he used to sing Black Sabbath songs. I said, hey, can you do an opera version of uh, Paranoid? And he said, absolutely. Anything for you. Nailed it. He uh, went and underwent surgery for a brain tumor. They said he needed immediate surgery. Boy, Pancake, you want to talk about going to the dentist? And uh, they go, yeah, we got to take care of these cavities. Well, you go in for like a thing and they go, oh, we have to operate on your brain right away. I'm sure that's how it happens. How many people have gone in for like what they thought was a minor surgery? And they're like, oh, we didn't see this before. We have to take care of this. Well, it doesn't sound like he went in for surgery. It sounds like they found something as part of a checkup. Well, and that's then what they I mean. Sorry, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't mean surgery. But, like, you just, you know, do an annual checkup, and they're like, oh, you have 30 days to live. <laughs> All right. I got some inside intel. They said that that was your voice. George? George said that was Alan's voice. My voice? That's, that's what Rob Anthony just said. How does Rob Anthony know that? He heard it. And he said... Just now? Yeah. And he uh, said that sounds like Alan. It does? I didn't think that it did. I, I didn't either. I don't either. So either but, uh, um, let me listen to it again. Uh, again, I, I would like would, to think I'd re- I would recognize my own voice. Would, how would we not recognize it? Hey, Alan. George here. Just wanted to say that I'm a big fan of the show. Alan, Bill, Mary, and Pound Cake. Keep up the work. I appreciate you all for making my afternoons better. All right, have a good one. No, that's now not that's my Joseph voice. Sports. That's who that is. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that we've all uh, we we've all, we've all been in showbiz for a mm-hmm. while. I'm sure that we have all um, come in contact with this. But it can be a real bummer when people tell you what they think you look like, because uh, somebody tagged me in uh, an Instagram story last night because they were watching the Golden Globes. And they tagged me because they said, oh, I thought this was Alan Cox for a second. Who was it, Meryl It was Street? Christopher Nolan. Oh. And I was like, wow, <laughs> that's what I look like to your eyes is Christopher Nolan. Um, I mean, the only thing I can really see there is you have a similar hair style. But maybe. That's also it like always comes down to the hair. 95% of men have this hairstyle. So yeah, like, maybe. I, uh, I was just like, wow. And you're white. You have you <laughs> noses. I am white. You're around the same age. But it would be different if everybody was sending me pictures of Christopher Nolan thinking that mm-hmm. was me. But over the years, people have been like, oh, this will look like you for a second. And they're always different. They're always nine times out of ten. They're not flattering. Nobody sends you a photo of David Lee Roth in the 70s and goes, I thought this was you for a second. Uh, but it's very strange what people's eyes uh, tell them. Their eyes, their ears, their perception from this show to us doing anything else. Several, one guy in particular came up to me after shows this weekend at Hilarities and was like, you know, based on the show, I thought you were going to be terrible. <laughs> based on the, the radio show. But you were amazing. 
So, but uh, so, I can't stress enough that based on the radio show, I didn't like you at all. But well, it's, your stand-up's it's great. I, right. I, I have just like, told people you this. You don't have to keep reiterating it, though. <laughs> I've told people this for a long, long time. I said, I have a friend. I have a female friend. She's the most recent person I've told this to. Who does not like Mary on the show. Not, all right. Not at all. Let me kiss her. And when you announced your farewell shows, she had a friend that wanted to go. And I, I don't think I knew this. She was telling me all this uh, after the fact because I would assume, that's not a person I would assume would go to one of your farewell shows. Mm-hmm. And she told me that they went and they had a great time and you were fantastic. And I said, I have to explain this to people all the time, that radio and stand-up are two completely different things. And as somebody who did both and came from uh, the, the latter, uh, from the former, I'm like, there's a big difference between speaking off the cuff and doing an hour of prepared material right. that you know that works, rehearsed that you've rehearsed and written, and you've done it a hundred times, yeah. and every day on the radio is completely different. So now, it's it's a it's a big plus if you have funny people, but there was this big wave, and, and I just know this from this side of the table professionally, this huge wave in the early to mid-90s in radio where they were, there was kind of a dearth of really compelling uh, personalities, right, in, like, big markets and things. They were like, let's put comedians on the radio because it makes sense in your head. You go, these are funny people, let's put them on the radio. And some of them were great. Some of them flourished. Most of them did not because, A, they're not used to being up at 6 in the morning. B, they're not used to speaking off the cuff. They're doing prepared material every night over and over. They're not doing a new set every night. And so a lot of people still don't understand that. And I've had to tell people all the time, I go, if somebody doesn't like you or doesn't like Mary, I go, go see them live. You'll know what we're talking about. That's different from the show. They're two completely different animals. I think most people obviously understand that. I'm just surprised at how many don't. Right. And if you want to see me live this weekend, I'll I'll be (laughs) in Canton. I'll be in Canton at the Patina Arts Center, 8 o'clock, so you can watch the Browns game. And then you can come on over and watch me tell jokes. What time's the Browns game? 4.30. Oh, they'd come see you after the game. Yes. So it should, bah, it should he time was, out. Mary, he was waiting for me to finish. I was going to say so just going relevant. So he could get that I one was, in. That's okay. I, I was, was just going with else. the way we rehearsed it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my script. Yeah. What were you going to oh, say? Oh, I lost the page. Well, ma- all right, it was Mary's yeah. turn. Uh-huh. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. No, what it's were you going to say? What were you now fine. available on YouTube no, by Mary I- Santora. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had, um, I've had the opposite happen where I'll show up and people will see a credit um, in my bio from radio and they'll assume I'm not a good comic. Well, because that has also happened where yeah. there was a wave of, of radio stations booking hosts and openers to for the free promotion, essentially. The comedy clubs would be like, oh, we'll have this radio person come do 10 minutes of stand-up so that they can talk about the shows, and then they're a trash comic. So I've opened for other comics who've seen that I do radio, and then they're like, oh, you're actually good at comedy. I was like, yes, I was in comedy before I ever did radio. That right. happens all the time yeah. where I'll open for someone. I think, uh, who was it? Uh, Russell Peters. Saw my set and he's like, "Wait, you're funny? I thought you were just a radio guy." I'm like, "No, I'm f- I'm good." And he's like, "Oh, thanks. That's that's awesome." That makes but he me had so you happier. on his show. Yeah. Well, he, he just he just uh, hilarious had booked me. Oh, I see. And then he maybe it was maybe he just thought cause I was local because that was before I was on the show. It, it might have been someone else, but like I think Nikki Glazer was that way. Uh, Seguro was that like. There's a lot of comics were like, "Oh, I thought you were just a radio guy, but you're actually a pretty good comic." So. Right. And you can't blame them for t- treating radio people like dicks because most of them are. Right. So, I mean, you know. Jeff was raving about just the interview that he did on the show. He's like, it's always so nice to come and do this show. Yes. Because comics love coming Alan to the show. Gets, Because it's fun. Alan gets it, and it's fun. And uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, he, he does so much other press where it, they're like, oh, you think you're so funny? <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. There's oh, a lot my of God. Why like would that. you have somebody on to, like, pile on them? I like don't you're. Know. You're doing a morning show in Mankato, North yeah. Dakota or something. Ah, uh, boy. Well, anyway, uh, everybody's great. And Michael Bolton had uh, brain surgery. That's crazy. 
I got a break. Uh, you want to send a text 35192 to do that? AlanCoxShow.com is where you can watch live, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iTunes.